Before we start this Let's Play off proper, I want to address two things. First, if you're new to this channel or if you've just never realized what this was, when we upload episodes of our Let's Plays, there are almost always two versions of every episode. There's one that will say it has uncut commentary and one that has cut commentary. The difference between the two is uncut commentary, we talk over everything. That means we'll be talking over dialogue and cut scenes and all of that stuff. If you want to focus more on the story of whatever game we're doing a Let's Play of, including this one, then you want to listen to the cut commentary version where our commentary does not overlap with any cut scenes or important dialogue. We will stay quiet for that stuff. We always have two separate playlists for these so that you can just binge watch all of one certain type of commentary if you want to. And the other thing before we start is please be courteous about spoilers for this game. I know it's 23 years old, but the remake has new stuff in it. And like I said in the previous video, there's a good amount of people who seem to have no knowledge of Final Fantasy VII these days. So please be respectful for that stuff. And with that, on we go. Wow, it's finally here. You know it's a remake when the opening title is, like, flashback music. <laughs> 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 Fucking flashback harps. Yeah. This is the, uh, the kind of main theme of Final Fantasy as a franchise in general. It shows up in basically all the games in some, some fashion. Mm-hmm. But, uh, wow, it's Final Fantasy VII Remake, a game, um that everybody wanted to exist and basically willed it into existence after <laughs> complaining about it for nearly 20 years. Now, if only Shenmue 3 would... Wait, wait a minute. Oh no. my god! I can't believe it. But yeah, for people who, who don't know, while this is called Final Fantasy VII Remake, this is the first in a series of games remaking the original game. <laughs> because it turns out when you take a JRPG from 20 years ago where a lot of things are more abstract and then you flesh them out into actual real things that you walk around and are more real life in scale, turns out that game's scale becomes astronomically larger. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this this is a remake. It's not just like they're, they're taking that thing up in the corner and, and putting HD textures on it. It is... Yeah, this is... There's a whole lot more to it. <laughs> Even compared to other recent remakes, this one's really interesting because they go whole out in what, like, what can a remake be and what should it be? Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, you could play the Crash Bandicoot or Spyro remakes and they're the exact same game. This is not the exact same game. <laughs> it's very similar, but in some ways it almost feels like a sequel just because it's like you, you're you familiar with everything here, but it still feels like new somehow. Mm hmm. Also, if anyone plays this, you should d absolutely change that camera distance in battle thing to two or three so the camera's <laughs> further out from you. Otherwise, it's a bit too close when you're fighting stuff. If there's any game out there that was as impactful on me as the Metal Gear Solid series, it would be this game. And I, j just to clarify, like, I play this game a shitload. You know things about this game, but you never played it, right? I have not played any Final Fantasy. Oh, man. Not, not even, like, non-mainline things like tactics or whatever. Oh, wow. Okay, here we go.
Get down here, Merc. If some dude does a flip and that's the first thing he does in front of you, you know he's cool. Hell yes. The original Final Fantasy VII was a turn-based RPG. This remake is an action RPG and only the second in the mainline series to go that route with the previous being Final Fantasy XV. Mm -hmm. When this game was first getting shown off, people were worried like, oh, this is going to play like XV. This looks just like XV. This game plays nothing like XV, which is good. <laughs> XV had some really mushy, unresponsive combat, but this game feels great to play. You're coming with us. Nice and easy. <laughs> Don't think so. Not bad. This, this is a action RPG in a post-Platinum Games world. Yeah, totally. Who in the hell? Hands where I can see them! Have fun. So this game adapts a lot of the mechanics from the original game, the biggest being the ATB or active time battle system. Mm -hmm. So basically everyone has a meter that fills up and once it's full, their turn is ready. You could be attacked while you're navigating menus or waiting for your turn to come up, which made the game feel a little more timing based and actiony. In this game, that bar fills up slowly over time on its own, but you can boost how mm -hmm. fast it fills up by landing normal attacks on enemies and the two segments of the bar here can each be spent to perform some type of special action. <laughs> All right. Freeze! Move and we shoot! Go ahead. <laughs> so we hit an enemy enough to fill up one segment of our ATB gauge, and now we can spend that segment to do some type of special action. To perform abilities, you have to press Enough the X this. button to open up this tactical mode that brings up a menu kind of like the original game had. Uh, and it also just puts puts you in slow-mo for fucking ever. So you can just watch these guys just fly. Is that why this uh, video is more than an hour long? Oh yeah, okay. keep in slow motion all the time. <laughs> but yeah, to use abilities, spells, or items, you have to have at least one gauge of your ATB meter full. So we're gonna use the Braver ability. Holy shit, you soldier operator! It's just a cool flip. It's a cool flip that does a lot of damage. Nothing to it. You should just know this about Cloud. He's all about cool flips. <laughs> and also, like, I said this in the previous video, there's there's a lot of other baggage with this game that there's tons of prequels and sequels that came out later. Mm -hmm. That's, that's now Final Fantasy Legends, though. Uh, Final oh, Fantasy God. Canon is moving off in a new branch. Oh, man. <laughs> that, that poster is a little reference to the prequel game Crisis Core. Don't worry about any of that stuff. It, you don't need to know any of it. Mm -hmm. also, I, I enjoy that there's immediately like an ad for some type of hair tonic to explain for Cloud's very beautiful spiky hair. <laughs> It's not like that. He had to put in the work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He doesn't just roll out of bed like that. What do you say? No. He might say he does. Yeah, I mean, he flips out of bed anyways. So. <laughs> Drop the weapon! You got this. Yeah, what he said. What are you doing? <laughs> where, where did you go to the left? What? Just hiding. So there is both blocking and dodging this game. Well, we did bring up Platinum Games earlier. Uh, don't try and play this like a Devil May Cry or a Platinum game. <laughs> You'll end up getting your ass kicked. You're coming with us. Can't get surrounded. Try harder. And while you can dodge, blocking is the better choice most of the time because blocking straight up reduces damage by like nope. two thirds. <laughs> while dodging has no invincibility frames. So like, ah. if you can physically, if you physically move out of the way of an attack, yeah, it might miss, but stuff like gunshots that can track you, you will take full damage while you're dodging. So while it's, there's like an action wrapper to this game, it still feels a lot more like an RPG in that taking damage is still a big part of it and mitigating and damage and healing is still like a big part of that. It's not just, you can't just perfect frame dodge everything like mm -hmm. Bayonetta or something. 
wow, this giant corporation is really trying to convince me they're nice. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing subtle about how this game feels about corporations and stuff like that. <laughs> So even in this cyberpunk fantasy world, there's just normal ass treasure chests hanging around. Uh, there's some potions in here. They are just, they're just normal healing items. There's also this other treasure chest that's pretty easy to miss. It's got grenades in there. They're grenades. Ooh. Well, that that's off limits. There's little sawhorses and everything. Yeah, it's employees only. This game is also a game that throws Japanese and English characters mixed together all the time for no reason other than it looks cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, we all saw Blade Runner. We know it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, they like to mix in Greek letters sometimes too. Also, there's this little ad over here, the, the Adventures of Stamp Book 3. Mm -hmm. S Stamp's a whole new thing. <laughs> he wasn't in the original game. We'll get a better idea as to what he is, but somebody's going to, later in this video, refer to another person as Stamp. This is what he's talking about. <laughs> okay, all right. That's world building right there. You, you create a cartoon dog and then you reference him as an insult. <laughs> uh, you can, there's crates to break that either yes. drop basic healing items or stuff, other things to like heal you in other ways. Your Star Wars theme crew is getting away from you. Gotta catch up. So what's Soldier Boy's deal? Is he one of us now? He's got balls, this, uh, uh, what was his name again? Cloud. Cloud Strife. Right. And he isn't a soldier anymore. Still, he's a professional, unlike the rest of us. I'm glad to have him. <laughs> This is a one-time gig. When it's done, we're done. Uh, uh, uh. Real joy to work with, though. Real joy to look at, too. Here we go. Looks are what people notice first. Guess I'm not on the same page as people. I'd say you're not even the same people. Or even the same. Give it a rest. <clears throat> Come on, nobody do something this crazy just for money. They may not think you're a true believer, but you know what I think? Not interested. What? <laughs> Wedge. Better be worth the money, Merc. Every last gill. <laughs> I love the the whole rest of the crew you're with here. One of the reasons why 7 is still maybe my fi favorite Final Fantasy is just it has a really fun cast. Yeah. Get him, boy! Guess you're first. Also, you can lock on enemies. You don't want to do this all the time because sometimes it makes the camera go a little funky. <laughs> but it's still useful. Also, on top of the, the abilities Cloud has, uh, he has magic spells. Uh, if you look at the lower right, on top of the, the health he has, he also has MP for, for casting magic. On top of MP, you still have to use, like, a, a part of your gauge to cast spells, too. It's not just MP you're, you're, you're using here. He only has a fire spell, but uh, thankfully, dogs are weak to fire, it turns out. <laughs> this is a very realistic game, I'm sorry to say. It's extremely realistic. This dog that has a tentacle growing out of its spine. Get ready. Well, the tentacle is weak to water. That's a bit <laughs> counterintuitive. Yeah. Damn, somebody's a cat person. Is that it? <laughs> This chest has an ether in it. Those are used just to, to restore 20 MP. 
Or if you want to get high in the Cider House rules. Yeah. I mean... Come on. It's kind of how casting magic works in the first place, I think. <laughs> Should point out, I've been using basic attacks for a while now, but in the lower left, you can see on top of attacks, there's this thing called Punisher Mode. Mm -hmm. uh, the triangle button for Cloud makes him switch combat stances. He has the default Operator Mode and this Punisher Mode. It makes him move really slow, but he attacks harder, and if you are guarding with Punisher and you get hit with a melee attack, he automatically counterattacks. The counterattack hits really hard, too. It's, it's a good thing to use. Was never in doubt. And the counter still counts as a block, too, so you still reduce damage while getting hit. I'm starting to wonder why the dogs are tougher than the fully armored guards with guns. The strong dogs! <laughs> I mean, the real answer is, is that uh, they're mutant dogs. Okay, they're mutant dogs. Later in the game, you will absolutely see normal as real life dog breeds just hanging around. And then you have these nightmare dogs that look like they're covered in leather and have <laughs> tentacles growing out of their spines. I mean, the tentacles should have been a clue, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> This way. Everyone sounds real tired already. <laughs> huh. Not so fast. We've got company. No, they, they were all groaning because Biggs tried to tell a joke while while you were oh, gone. Oh no. Oh wait, that's a dog? That's not a dog. That is a vampire. <laughs> it's, it's a fucked up dog is what that dog is. That's that. <laughs> So, while, well, you know, just rapidly pressing the square button makes Cloud do basic attacks. Mm -hmm. uh, if you press and hold that that button down, he does like a little spin attack that hits everybody around him for a decent amount of damage, too. This game doesn't really have combos per se, but there, there are a couple different attacks you can do just by like whether or not you just tap a button or you hold it instead. That dog's such a weird fucking mutant that it had a wallet with six bucks in it. Everything's got money in this game. <laughs> you can find a fucked up big rat and kill it, and he's got money on him. Rat wants to go to the store. Rat likes vending machines. Makes sense. That rat had a job. <laughs> on top of the braver ability, which was just a big cool flip, we also have mm -hmm. focus thrust, which is kind of like the stinger move that I've shown in Platinum games before, like Metal Gear Rising. He, he just shoots forward really fast and stabs people. It's just a stinger move. <laughs> and it's effective. All right. It's good. Nothing to it. But yeah, for people not in the know, this is their first experience with Final Fantasy VII. Wondering how faithful is this opening bit? It's pretty faithful mm -hmm. to the original. Uh, it's not taking anything away. If anything, it's only adding more to the original. Soldiers may attack on command, but I hear they make good guard dogs, too. Bet you've seen a few reactors. So how do we get to the bridge above Mako storage? <sighs> Ain't holding out on me, are you? Stamp scared to bite the hand that fed him? Or is he a loyal little doggy? <clears throat> Have it your way, Mutt. We can do this with you, or we can do this without you. Different reactor, different layout. Depends when it was built. Never seen one like this, but I'll manage. Look, I got one metaphor and I'm gonna get everything I can out of it. He uses the whole buffalo. <laughs> well, he uses the whole dog. <laughs> he uses the whole dog, excuse me. The whole mutant dog. <laughs> so you can pop up the, the commands menu even outside of battle just to throw healing items all over your face. Potions are like energy drinks in this world. Don't you worry, Biggs will have the door open soon. And in order to down them, you, you have to say, Manja! Hey! <laughs> also, I love that this is just the pipe room where they keep all their massive pipes. Taking a potion is all in the wrist. <laughs> There's a certain flair you need to take a potion, right? <laughs> I'm watching you. 
All right, well, watch me do a cool flip or something then. Hell yeah. Haven't done one for 30 seconds. Shit. I'm glad to know we have at least one viewer on this video. <laughs> Thanks, Barrett. I believed in you. I'll secure our escape route, okay? You go on and catch up with the others. They're right there. Keep them safe, please. Don't worry about me. Go. Wedge just cares deeply about his friends and also has separation anxiety. <laughs> also, Wedge, people might recognize his voice. He's played by the actor who played Badger in Breaking Bad. Ah, I always forget his name. Yeah. Don't let him talk to you about Star Trek. It's not going to work out. In three, two, damn, I'm good. Who's there? Door! Oh, wait! It's over! That's my line. You have lines? A guy who does flips at any chance probably is thinking He's, of lines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So this is where they actually teach you about uh, Punisher mode. There's some other things with how Punisher we mode works. It. While it automatically counterattacks melee moves, it cannot counterattack long range or magic spells, mm -hmm. and it also is incapable of blocking magic or uh, long range attacks, so you will take full damage from those, even if you're blocking. Okay. Punisher makes him move slow, and you can still dodge roll, but if you roll, it takes you out of your Punisher stance and back into your normal operator mode stance. So it's really more uh, you hit guys while you're in it, and if you want to be maneuverable, you got to roll out of it. <laughs> You've got this. Yeah, the Punisher mode combo does way more damage. Brace yourself. Brace yourself for a cool flip. <laughs> We're back. Then let's move. He always knows just what to say. Cut it out. Simmer down, hotshot. This is the weirdest workplace sitcom I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I know someone who can get us the passcodes. <sighs> Pity no one else at command will talk to us, but what can you do? <sighs> and we're good. <laughs> Careful in there. <clears throat> I got this place covered. So before we go much further, for the majority of this Let's Play, we're not going to be doing a ton of compare and contrast with the original game, but just for this first episode, like, we'll, I'll show this whole stretch from, from the start to where we got from the original, because uh, it goes by way quicker. Yeah. It's also very cute, because they're all <laughs> Lego people. But I mean, it's essentially the same, yeah, just without the camera work. Kick to the chest, and then there's... There's Wedge cool doing flip. nothing. Cool flip. Newcomer. Newcomer. Yeah, newcomer. Uh, this guy carried two potions on him, which they didn't keep for the remake. I was hoping they would do that, just as like a very, very minor, minor thing to pay, like, care about, but... Your very first fight is two guards, still. But yeah, the original game, no Punisher mode or any of that stuff. It's just turn-based. You select attack, you use magic or items. There's no dodging. There's just a stat that gives you a chance for you might dodge an attack or not. Mm -hmm. And then you, you, you fist little, bump. Yeah. Little victory dances. In that first fight, Cloud goes from level 6 to 7. They kept that for the remake. Mm -hmm. It was like a little marker of like, ah, we have gone from Final Fantasy 6 to 7. Final Fantasy 8 does that too, where you level up from 7 to 8 in the first battle, I think. <laughs> but yeah, like, oh, we're at this scene already. You don't see the interior of that building at all in the original game. <laughs> Level's just a number, baby. It's true. One of the other interesting things is like, a lot of the dialogue is pretty similar, but more fleshed out and a little more natural sounding and also you were called newcomer because you could name your characters in the original mm -hmm. since there was no voice dialogue the original Final Fantasy 7's localization is not great <laughs> uh, because it was like three people doing it over the course of like a month mm -hmm. and it's, it was a huge amount of text 
Nowadays, if you do buy the the original, because it's on Steam, Switch, like every platform, it's easy to get a hold of. Uh, they actually made a new translation of it that's a little more natural sounding. Um, and at least took out some of the really bad grammatical errors that made a couple sentences in the original completely indecipherable. <laughs> Yeah, one of the reasons why this game was so fucking cool back is that they figured out how to integrate, like, FMV while still having gameplay on the screen at the same time. Mm -hmm. It was just a big, like, graphics and presentation upgrade that just made the game really cool to look at and it was exciting. And uh, also made JRPGs instantly popular overnight in the West because suddenly it wasn't boring static turn-based things. Like, you had sweeping camera angles and animations for everything. Mm -hmm. Cool flips. It's all about the cool flips. And cool fucking flips, too, man. Also fun bringing this up, just so you can hear the difference between the original song and the new arrangement for the game, where it's like... Basically the same. Mm -hmm. They just put in... Not real instruments, but synths that sound a lot more real. <laughs> Cloud used to know a lot more magic back then, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bolt and ice. Wow. Yeah, you can still talk to Wedge over here. He's in the same fucking spot he is in the remake. He's a little more excited to blow shit up in the original, I suppose. <laughs> Less concerned about the safety of his friends. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, this room... Big pipes in the same spot. Uh, no fight here since they don't have to teach you how to use Punisher mode, but... <laughs> it is interesting to look at some of the these environments they remade because they went a slightly different direction with them where it's less just giant, cold, unfeeling machines everywhere, and they went, okay, people actually have to work here, though. There need to be lockers and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> This is the same room that the footage just ended on. Uh, the room that branches off to the side there is gone. Well, then how are you supposed to get your phoenix down, then? Well, hey, they moved the treasure chest with the phoenix down right over here. It's a, it's a tuft of it now. It's a tuft. Yeah, there's, there's actual evidence that, like, people have to work here, you know, lockers and a whole bunch of other crap that leaves some trace that there's, like, employees here. Mm-hmm crates piled up in front of the lockers and some sort of workplace prank, I guess. <laughs> Security is only going to get tighter, so be ready. We can't afford any more mistakes. Yeah, the Phoenix down I picked up, that's just an item used to revive any uh, teammates that have uh, been knocked out. So, you know Tifa, right? It's not really my business, but are you guys close? Tifa and I. Sewer rats appear to call themselves Avalanche, sir. We are currently investigating whether they belong to the same group that made the attempt on your life. Rest assured, our inquiries will not take much longer. <laughs> this pump's sole purpose is to drain the planet dry. While you sleep, while you eat, while you shit, it's here sucking up Mako. It doesn't rest, and it doesn't care! You do realize what Mako is, don't you? Mako uh. is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? 
Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in pain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do! Get help. <laughs> huh? Say that again! <clears throat> I'd worry less about the planet and more about the next five seconds. Save the screaming for later. Our lives are on the line now. You listening, Merc? One false move. And that happens. Well, so much for having Cloud do all the fighting. There are some places a sword just can't reach. <laughs> just bear with him for me, would you? <laughs> yeah. Should have asked for more money. <laughs> oh, yeah. Someone has a last name. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Barrett, uh, I mean, his fucking arm's a gun. He can shoot stuff from far away and, and shoot people Cloud can't. Something cool about this game Gonna throw your sword at him? is That's that all the, the party gun. members of this game play very they differently from each other. Guy. Like, mm -hmm. even just moving them around, they feel way different, uh, which is not an element the original game had. Well, they didn't actually move much. I mean, yeah, the movement part, for sure. But yeah, on top of just shooting stuff with a square button, his triangle attack is this overcharge move that does a ton of damage. Once you use it, though, you have to wait for it to charge up again before you can use it. Mm -hmm. He's also got two spells on him. He's got uh, lightning magic, and he's also got a spell for, uh, for healing people. He's not as good at magic as Cloud is. Cloud, in this game, Cloud is basically the all-rounder. He's pretty good at everything. Mm -hmm. So you can freely swap between any of your party members uh, during battle with the D-pad. Now, when you swap characters, whoever you are not currently controlling will switch over to AI mode. AI-controlled characters will only use basic attacks, block, and dodge. They will not use any of their abilities or spells, and they won't use items on their own either. Okay. And it's because the ATB gauge is a precious resource. <laughs> So it would really suck if your members were using up their ATB gauge on moves that weren't helpful or they were using items uh, way too frequently. So yeah, in this game, you have to be manually controlling all of your party members and giving all of them orders. Sorry. And there you have it. Congratulations, you shot robots. I bet you <laughs> feel like a big man now. I sure do. Gonna have to do a flip to celebrate. <laughs> so we can pop open the main menu here. There isn't much for us to do in this yet. It's not until chapter two where a lot of the stuff in this menu unlocks and we can actually start messing around with our equipment and all the other stuff regarding character growth. Mm -hmm. But there are a couple things to touch on here. Uh, of course, both Cloud and Barrett here are level seven. Whenever characters in this game level up, their maximum HP and MP increases, as well as all their other stats will go up, just like, you know, every other damn RPG. But if we go to the party menu, menu here, we can see all the different stats that everybody has. Um, the main stats you actually need to worry about are attack, magic attack, defense, magic defense, luck, and speed. The other stats there that are Strength, Magic, Vitality, and Spirit, those are the base stats of the characters if they weren't wearing any equipment. So Cloud's attack stat is his base strength plus whatever attack values his weapons and other equipment have. Add those together, that's what his actual attack stat is. We've also got 
our items here. Uh, we have been picking up grenades. I am not going to be using those this chapter. That'll be for next episode. But there's also one other really helpful thing that we can do here. So in this menu, you can set up shortcuts. I've already used these a couple times in the, the episode here. You can set moves, spells, or items to shortcuts. So if you think you're going to be using potions a lot or this fire spell, you can just put it on this shortcut and then you can use that ability even without having to go into the tactical menu. It still costs ATB gauges and MP and all that stuff. You just don't have to go into the menu to use it. Look what we have here. A laser security system. Great. Those things will hurt more than your pride if you're careless. They'll cut you down to size and then some. But I'm guessing you've done this kind of thing before. Yeah. Figure out the timing of the lasers. Then, make a move when they cycle off. Exactly. I'll go first. Nothing like a little danger to get the blood pumping. Hey! Just keep those baby blues of yours on me. It's a really long cycle, though. That doesn't seem too dangerous. <laughs> yeah, it's a... Uh... It is a very funny, like, James Bond villain security grid. Mm -hmm. You're doing good, so and of course, while Cloud, it's very easy to, to dodge those lasers. If you ever hear a sizzling noise in the background, that's Barrett running his dumbass face into them. <laughs> they, uh, they don't do a ton of damage or anything. So yeah, this is the same area in the original. Uh, no security grid, no lasers there. You don't even get to see what's underneath that thing in the original. You just go around the side. <laughs> yeah, those boxes sometimes drop Mako shards, which just uh, restore a teeny tiny bit of MP, usually enough to cast like one extra spell. Mm -hmm. Look. They don't call those things sweepers for nothing. They can wipe out a whole squad in seconds. Not if you wipe the floor with them first. Who decided to give the robot giant goofy shoes? <laughs> I guess it's for balance. Ah! We can take this hunk of junk! That hunk of junk is a heavy weapons platform. If we rush in, we die. Is that right? Need to hit it with magic. That should give us an opening. Bring in the heat! So Cloud said to use magic on this sweeper. There are four elements in this game. There are mm -hmm. fire, wind, ice, and lightning spells in this game. Certain enemies are weak to certain elements, and you'll generally notice that certain categories of enemies are weak to certain elements. So machinery or robots, almost always weak to lightning spells in this game. Mm -hmm. So we hit it with the thunder spell, and it takes bonus damage. So hovering above this sweeper are two bars, the top one being its health and the one below it that's filling up orange being its stagger meter. Ooh. Almost every attack in this game will fill up stagger very slowly. But generally, what you want to do is hit enemies with hard hitting attacks or their elemental weakness to put them in what is called a pressured state. Enemies that are pressured will have their stagger meter fill up faster than normal when they're hit with attacks. So this Let's enemy right down. now is pressured. You, you want the enemy to get an email from their boss saying that, oh, oh, hey, God. can you come to my office and no context. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this robot's about to lose his job. So this enemy is pressured. There are certain abilities that work with the stagger meter. Cloud's focus thrust here, its description in the lower left said that it significantly increases stagger. Mm -hmm. Same with Barrett's ability here, focus shot. It significantly increases stagger. It increases a little bit more than normal attacks normally, but if you use these focus abilities on enemies while they're in their pressured state, they will take a ton of stagger damage. So just those two abilities alone almost staggered it on their own. But now that this enemy is staggered, uh, it's completely defenseless. It won't attack, it won't be able to move or anything. So until its stagger meter drains, it takes bonus damage. Right now, it's taking 160% bonus damage. 
So you want to hit it with, with this weakness. You want to hit it with anything hard hitting like magic or clouds of braver ability. This way you can do way more damage than you normally would when the enemy is not staggered. What are you? 20 something? First. Huh? Soldier first class. Doesn't go into the 20s. What the hell are you talking about? I mean your age, not your goddamn rank. I, uh... <clears throat> Though for all I know, a soldier's rank could be the same as his age. Mm-hmm. Guess that make you a one-year-old, huh? Live and learn! I'm a very large baby. <laughs> How big? I'm the world's tallest baby. Born with a silver sword. <laughs> Full head of hair. <laughs> and then some. Yeah, that, that conversation is new to the, the remake. Uh, they pepper in a lot of, like, new conversations whenever you're in dungeons and stuff, where it normally just you just be getting into random battles and that's it. And they're all, they're all pretty fun, stuff like that. One more comparison. Sweepers basically the same looks pretty pretty much the same they, they were very faithful to uh the enemy designs of the the original in pretty much every case which is fun because one of the worries i saw a lot of people have was oh there are some enemies that appear in final fantasy 7 later on that are very strange just fucking weird bizarre designs and they're like yeah yeah they're not gonna keep those and like it'll be a while before we see any of those but no they kept the fucking bizarre enemies for sure and they look <laughs> basically the same and it's great I know I've seen you talk about that Barrett conversation, you know, how nice it is to, to have a, a shade of Cloud's character being this goofy guy trying way too hard to be th <laughs> this sort of badass character. Yeah. But I, I also like it because, like, it shows that Cloud at this point is thinking of himself in terms of, you know, his job and his place in whatever, like, it, in, in the grander scheme of, like, the state or, you know, whoever yeah. runs the soldier program, and Barrett's like, no, your, your inherent identity, please. That's our target, the reactor core. Gotta set the bomb at the bottom. Let's get down there. And that's great that Cloud is entirely all about that when he's already made it clear that he's not a soldier anymore. Yeah. Damn, I can practically taste the fuck in here. Hurry it up. It's still like his whole identity for him is just like, I'm a fucking capital S O L D I E R soldier, bitch. <laughs> In all caps, you better have the su subtitles on to know how important this is. My heart's pounding like a jackhammer. Scared, huh? <laughs> More like excited. I've been dreaming about this for years. Something else I really like about the, the writing, especially for the remake is um, a problem that the most recent mainline Final Fantasy had, Final Fantasy XV, aside from it being basically the Metal Gear Solid V of Final Fantasy. <laughs> Heads up, boys. The end's in sight. I leave the rest in your capable hands. Good luck. It had an issue with its writing of they just never explained lots of terms to you, or if they did, it was via <laughs> loading screens, and you could just never really get a sense of things, whereas in this game, without explicitly stating everything to you, or at least not right away, you can still glean a lot of stuff from the world from the way people talk. Mm hmm Aw, you're choosing me over the reactor? That's sweet, but I'll wait my turn. Go blow her mind. Go on, shoo! Jesse definitely was, like, thirsty in the original, but not to the degree she is in the remake. <laughs> <laughs> she, it is, like, she is aggressive in this game. It <laughs> uh, seems like bad advice, Jesse, actually. <laughs> Uh, so here's another another enemy. Uh, this is one of the first weird enemy designs. They're a little small. Mm -hmm. So uh, in instances like this, I'll bring up this screen. If you press the touchpad on the PS4 controller, you can bring up like this data Ooh. sheet for enemies. This is what this guy looked like in the original. He was just a weird floating stick, and I thought he had a, t a tiny brain on the top. <laughs> I thought that was a brain. It's actually a big eyeball. Uh. But yeah, you can learn a little bit more about the enemies by bringing this up because there's always like a little paragraph describing what they are. This is a bionic sentry, so they just made a robot with an AI in it and glued a monster eyeball to it. This is a rejected Digimon. Yeah. Yeah. 
yeah, you can see it, it, this thing was made by Shinra's R&D division, and you know, when we first came into this actual uh, room with the reactor, there's just a giant Shinra logo on the ground. So on top of being a Shinra electric and power company, they make fucking monsters. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there, there's your little friend. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I love these weirdos. I love these eyeballs on sticks. <laughs> and when they die, the eyeball rolls off. You think if we fell in, we sink right down to the bottom, to the planet's core? No, the pump would suck us back up. <laughs> How comforting! I mean, you're willing to try. I, it sounds mm. like. So yeah, that green juice is the the Mako that Bear was talking about, which mm -hmm. is. It's planet blood. Planet blood. The planet needs juice to live. Give the planet its juice. Something nice about Barrett's moveset is, you know, even though his overcharge move has to recharge before he can use again, at the start of every battle, it's fully recharged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even if only a second pass between both battles. Man, I wish we could fix our planet with Powerade. Yeah, same. Do a flip over the wall. Come on, do a flip. He honestly could. He's, he's saving his energy for flips when more people can see them, I think. <laughs> Something I really like about this game is so... I really enjoyed the soundtrack of the original game. Mm -hmm. uh, this game goes like above and beyond. The original game soundtrack was on three CDs. This game soundtrack, which is only a fraction of the soundtrack, because this game is only adapting a certain chunk of the original game, is eight CDs long. <laughs> there are tons of new battle themes, or like here, they have the original Mako reactor theme, but when you're in battle, there's a battle version of that theme that fades in. Mm -hmm. They do tons of stuff like that. It's great. All right, let's see if little Stamp really can bite the hand that feeds. Go on, do the honors. Prove to me you're the man Tifa says you are, that you're one of us. Never said I was. I'm just here for the paycheck. Then do the damn job! Fine. What about the timer? You'll call, Merc. You might as well always go with 20 minutes with this choice, because 20 minutes is super easy still. Mm -hmm. um, and also, if you do 20 minutes, uh, you get a couple extra bonus items afterwards as a Ooh. reward. And uh, if you did this in the demo, you got like an extra tiny little cutscene showing off one of the villains that appears later. Um, not so here, of course, but <laughs> yeah, 20 minutes, super easy. Just go for it. Pretty cocky, ain't you? <gasps> you double crossing! Heads up! What in the hell? Hey, how the hell do we fight this thing? It's got reinforced armor plated, but the internals can be overloaded. Lightning magic. Huh. No other option, huh? So yeah, you're generally going to know when the uh, Scorpion Sentinel is going to attack somebody because he always has like a targeting laser that says, I'm going for this guy next. Hell yeah! You see the damage that did? Keep it up! Uh, yeah, of course, he's weak to lightning magic, he's a robot. When he's pressured, you want to hit him with focus thrust and focus shot to fill that bar up real fast. You can stagger him super quick if you're, if you line everything up just right. Going in. 
Also, party members will fill up their ATB gauges faster if they attack a staggered enemy with their unique abilities, which are those abilities on the triangle button. Okay. The hell is that? A barrier? Never seen this defense system before. Sir. Thought you were the expert. So what's your brilliant plan, genius? He's got a shield. He deflects all attacks and makes him only take like one Gotta damage. He also uh, completely nullifies lightning magic, so he's not weak to it when the shield is up. Oh, oh, that's a shame. He's got a weak point though. You want you want to hit his butt. Ah, yeah, that'll do it. There. Attack it from the rear. Aye, right, soldier boy, show me what you got. You want, don't want to be near the scorpion's butt for too long, though, because he'll always hit you with his tail, and all of his tail attacks do a shitload of damage. Yeah, there, there's an Aesop's fable about that, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so you either want to hit that with Barret's overcharge no, attacks or now. fire hit spells. He's not, he doesn't nullify oh, fire. Now. Just shoot! <laughs> it's my time to shine. <laughs> or go down in flames. So Barrett's focus shot thing, if you look in the menu in the left there, uh, you can see there's two blue pips to the right of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that move, if you have two ATB gauges full, the focus shot will use both of them, and it will do more damage and more stagger damage than if you only used one. Ah. There, there's a couple moves that have the ability to use either one or two gauges. Damn pain in the ass! Also, uh, just like Metal Gear Rising is a robot about to attack you, guess what? You can fucking parry that. <laughs> and you said that this game was going to be like nothing we've done before. <laughs> okay, there are some similarities to some other things. Watch the tail. You don't want to be hit by that laser. Huh? So what do we do? Don't get hit. Take cover behind that debris. This bit here happens with the original boss fight too, but there's a really bad mistranslation of Cloud's dialogue where he says, his tail is going up. Attack it, it's about to shoot its laser. And it was mistra mistranslated from, don't attack it while its tail is up. It will hit you with its laser if you do. So everybody who's ever played the original always attacked it and then always got hit with the laser. <laughs> Barret's like shooting the scorpion. He's getting shot and getting knocked out of his attack. Um, Barret's other ability he has right now is this thing called Steel Skin. Um, when you use that, it increases his defense for a little bit and it also makes it way harder for him to get stunned out of his attacks. Um, so if you pop that, now Barret can just keep shooting, and even though he's getting shot, he's got not he's not getting knocked out of his attacks. Bring it home. Take it over. <laughs> Gotta memorize the attack. This boss fight, like when I first played this demo, and it seems to have been a very similar experience to everybody playing this fight for the first time, it's kind of fucking hard. <laughs> Watch and learn. Heads up! Tail laser! I see it! Then take cover already! This is not like a tutorial boss fight. This is a serious thing. One of the, the learning curves of this game at the start is realizing that, like, your basic attacks when you're just pressing square are not the main source of your damage. The main source are your abilities, and your attacks are kind of more a means to an end of building up your meter to do the, the big damage-dealing attacks. Right, right. Auto repair unit. Damn it. We gotta take it out quick or we're screwed. <laughs> oh, I am way ahead of you, Murphy. So yeah, with this final phase, the Scorpion doesn't move anymore. Its legs are busted, but it will slowly regenerate health. Some enemies have multiple parts you can attack, like these legs. Uh, generally, if you break a part on an enemy, either they'll stop doing an attack for a bit or they'll become pressured, like the instant you break the part. Mm -hmm. So here you break its leg. Uh, it's pressure. When I get my chance, I'm gonna blow this bastard the hell up. So there's another meter 
for every character. A fourth meter. Uh, it's a. It's the final meter. Uh, it's this yellow one in the bottom right filling up. This is the limit break. It fills up either if you're taking damage or it fills up when you stagger enemies. Once it's full, you get a very powerful attack that doesn't take any ATB gauges to use, and it does a ton of damage. Let's do this. showed you how it's done. Come on, we've got to move. Where should we be covering our way out? Go, go, go! See, even the scorpion wants to blow up the reactor. Mm-hmm. He shot it. Scorpion's on your side. We, we could have resolved this in another way. If only there were dialogue options, like a Western RPG. <laughs> yeah, that, that scorpion sentinel boss fight uh, is basically what every major boss fight in this game is going to be like. They're all gigantic spectacles with three or four phases each. Mm -hmm. um, and pretty much all based on figuring out how, how to race their stagger. Most boss fights, yeah, totally. And it's, I really enjoy the, the, the addition of the stagger because a lot of the enemies either have like interesting gimmicks or they kind of turn to like cool puzzles where you're trying to figure out how to exploit their weaknesses better. Oh no! How are you gonna flip your way out of this one? Ah, oh, heck. I have learned how to do flips with my arms, I've just been working on my legs. <laughs> you okay? Do I look okay? Help a girl out, would you? My hero! Hey! We'll link up over there! Look after Jesse! Way. Not entirely sure what Wedge's job was in this operation. <laughs> uh, he was the person who has secured the escape route. So basically he waits in one spot and makes sure no guards come by. <laughs> and I guess if they do, he fucking shoots them. Y yeah, really? Really? You think he would? He's got a gun. I don't know. We, we never see him shoot the gun. Pres presumably he knows how to shoot the gun. He's got one bullet in his shirt pocket. He's fucking Barney <laughs> Fife. We're running out of time. Shut up and climb. You're not helping. Sorry, it just it keeps me focused. I'll freak out if I don't talk. Have it your way. Uh, gotta say, Bear's also extremely good at climbing ladders with one arm. <laughs> Look at him go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe like a little hook on it would have helped. I've got you covered! Find us a way out of here! But then... Don't worry, I'll be fine. I've got Soldier Boy with me. X, Soldier Boy. They're here! Take them down! We don't have time for this shit! The clock's ticking! Cool it. Five seconds is all we need. Keep it together. Need my help, do you? Let's go. So there's even more things going on with both Cloud and Barrett's moveset, but also this game is very long, so I'm not going to be explaining everything right off the bat. <laughs> there's plenty of time to explain how all these guys work. There's at least 17 and three quarters minutes. Yeah. One of the cool things about Barrett's uh, overcharge move is uh, it fills up his ATB gauge like a ton. Basically, if you use it right at the start of the battle, it's it gives him a one gauge almost instantly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
You're such a good teammate. As soon as he's dead, you run. <laughs> you just haul ass and hope he's behind you. Heads up! We got a whole lot of comfort. No shit. This game was also, I believe, the, the, the original Final Fantasy VII was the first game I played that had swears in it, I think, and I was oh, very shocked by that. Oh. Yeah, so you right? Swears game. There was shit and stuff. They said shit. There were also lots of swears that were just random symbols and exclamation points. Swear Enix, baby. Whoa. Uh, so here's the Shock Trooper. <laughs> I thought this guy was like some type of weird monster, like humanoid monster. Uh huh. But uh -huh. if you, you read the description and look at the new versions, no, they're dudes hopped up on combat drugs in fucking weird suits. I'm learning so many new things about these guys. Whoa. Ain't you a vice doing? Like a rook seeing his first action. But these guys will dodge a lot of your basic attacks, um, so you need to use abilities, or Cloud's counter move is really good for staggering these guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you see me in action? Plus the mystic. You're going down! Deal with that. that. If Cloud at least wants everybody to watch him be cool, he should at least return the favor and watch yeah, Barrett be cool. Come on. <laughs> Sometimes things are reciprocal, okay? Also, uh, the Shock Troopers do the Naruto run. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's part of their training, I'm, I suppose. It, it lets them keep angular momentum for the stabbing. Yeah. I, I, I also assume pumping their arms when they have those big goofy gauntlets on would, would be kind of tiring. <laughs> <laughs> I do like the image of Barrett knocking one down and then just unloading a full, like, <laughs> fucking chain gun right in its face. <laughs> it's great. Those shock troopers sometimes have a battle cry that, because their their voices are a little muffled because they're wearing those helmets, sometimes they, they say, kiss my fist, but sometimes it sounds like, kiss my face! <laughs> Everybody's looking for their redemption art, come on. Take that as a yes. So for a lot of these episodes, we'll also at the end have some extra stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's extra dialogue or other dialogue choices or whatever. 
sometimes I might miss out on some extra extra scenes or something too. Uh, I was listening to to Biggs and Jesse gossip about me. You'll keep us safe, right, Cloud? Wow, they've almost got the door. We're doing this. We're really doing it, man. I think I'm gonna be sick. Just in case people were wondering what Wedge was thinking about at this point. You're a useful guy there, Wedge. <laughs> so, uh, the lasers. Jesse compliments you when you avoid them, but what happens if you run your face into them 3,000 times? You okay? Pay more attention. Just relax. Keep your cool. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't help myself. You soldiers sure can take a beating. Still kicking, I see. Are you trying to get hit? I mean, yeah, yeah actually. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea you were such a clutch. Um, do you have a fetish or something? There's a fine line between being daring and being dumb. Food for thought. I also like that Barrett does not care. <laughs> yeah. And again, different dialogue if you pick for thir go for 30 minutes. Huh. That long enough for you? He's always disapproving, no matter what you pick. <laughs> Damn it! So this extra dialogue, if, if you don't have Barrett use lightning magic after Cloud tells him to. Huh. We barely scratched the damn thing. Didn't I tell you to use magic? Thought you were full of shit. Think whatever you want. Just do it. Uh. Ah! I'm counting on you. Uh, also, a whole mechanic we didn't see. You can get grabbed by enemies or pinned by them. Got anything you want to say? <sighs> Funny way to ask for help. Ah! Hello, lightning magic? You even know how to use materia? Of course I know how to use materia. What kind of stupid question is that? Quit rushing me. Between being constantly disapproving and having healing magic, it's pretty obvious Barrett's a dad. Get off! <laughs> Don't just stand there. Help me out, damn it. <laughs> You were pretty rude about the timer earlier. You good? Not as good as I'd be if you'd actually tried to help me out. Damn it. No good. <laughs> Swing and a miss. There's got to be a weak point somewhere. I love that like you're fighting for your lives here, but Barrett's still taking joy from seeing Cloud fuck up. <laughs> nice try, dumbass. Frontal assault's no good. Gotta love Should've seen that. Come on. What do you think we're paying you for? Yeah, they have comments for when uh, party members are knocked out and stuff based on what party member is knocked out. Hey, you really gonna make me deal with this on my own? Huh? It didn't work? Ah! Ah, damn it! This thing is tough! It wouldn't be much of a weapon if it went down easy. Don't compliment the giant scorpion! <laughs> <laughs> Not Better finish this quick. Meanwhile, Cloud just like does not give a shit if Barrett's like knocked out. Wasn't much help anyway. Well, after all that, can you blame him? 